Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India continue with uh, our discussion. So what we have just shown in the, in the previous lecture is that uh, uh, if you start with uh, uh, any variety y and, and you take an affine variety x then there is a bijection between the set of morphisms from y to x and the k algebra homomorphisms from the uh, ring of affine functions ring of polynomials on x to the regular functions on y and this map is just the map induced by pull back of regular functions okay. So uh, we, are, we are just saying that uh, uh, morphisms into an affine via the pull back of uh, regular functions correspond to k algebra homomorphisms from the ring of functions on the affine okay. So let me repeat that morphisms into an affine uh, correspond via the pull back of regular functions to k algebra homomorphisms of uh, polynomials or regular functions on the affine. fine so now uh, now that we have this done uh, let me uh, let me tell you that there is a uh, uh, that there is a little bit more uh, to this um, to this proof uh, that can be extracted a nice little lemma uh, here is a lemma if if y is any variety <coughs> in our case that means uh, either affine or quasi affine variety and x is an affine variety uh, uh, say x in is in a n okay then a set theoretic map map psi from y to x is a morphism it's a morphism of varieties if and only if y followed by T i T i uh, is a regular function on y for every coordinate function T i on 
E n. Okay, so actually this is uh, this is a very beautiful statement. It tells you how to quickly verify that a uh, set set theoretic map is a morphism. Okay, and uh, so all it's saying is that you know to from from any variety which may be affine or not affine, if you have a set theoretic map into an affine variety, to check that it is a morphism of varieties, all you have to do is you compose it with the projections. Which are the coordinate projections? The target variety is sitting inside some affine variety. On that affine variety, you have the projections giving you the various coordinate functions. You compose this map with those projections. The resulting functions will be functions from y to k. And all you have to verify is that these are uh, uh, they are regular functions on y. So I'm so it's a very beautiful statement. It says a map from any variety into an affine variety a set theoretic map is a morphism if and only if it pulls back every coordinate function to a regular function that is what it says okay and uh, this is uh, the, the proof is actually the proof is uh, uh, proof is already contained in the earlier proof that I gave you okay uh, in the proof of the statement that uh, uh, the morphisms into an affine variety correspond to k algebra homomorphisms uh, from the ring of polynomial functions on that affine variety. Nevertheless let me repeat it okay. So you see if and mind you there is an if and only if condition one way the proof is very very simple if if psi is a morphism then then of course uh, then uh, then uh, since uh, T i since T i uh, restricted to x are regular functions on x it is clear it follows that uh, T i uh, that T i circle y uh, I am sorry I think it should have been T i circle psi not T i circle y okay that is a that is a that is wrong notation. T i circle y does not make any sense okay I should compose T i with psi okay please correct that okay. So T i circle psi will of course be a regular function on y this is this is very simple that is just because of the definition of a morphism because a morphism is supposed to pull back regular functions to regular functions okay. So T the coordinate functions on a n if I restrict them to x they are going to be regular functions on x because after all the coordinate functions on a n are the polynomials these are the polynomial variables okay. So when I say coordinate function T i on a n it means that I am as I am thinking of the functions on a n to be given by the polynomial ring in the n variables T 1 through T n okay. So each T i is a polynomial okay and you know polynomial functions are of course regular functions and therefore if you restrict each of these polynomials to x they are in ox and mind you ox is the same as ax ox is the same as ax because x is affine okay and uh, psi is already given to be a morphism so it will pull back regular functions to regular functions and what is the pullback of ti restricted to x under psi it is just ti circle psi okay it is just the composition and that is supposed to be a regular function on y because of the def definition of a morphism okay. So one way is very easy it is the other way that we need to understand conversely let uh, T i circle psi uh, if you want of course here when I say T i circle psi I mean T i restricted to x circle psi it does not matter uh, but that is what it means uh, because I am evaluating T i on the image of psi which is x because psi goes into x okay um, conversely assume that psi is just a set theoretic map with this property that it pulls back coordinate functions on the target affine variety into regular functions okay that is this T i circle psi is in O i for all i okay suppose this holds then I will have to show that psi is a morphism okay now how do I show that psi is a morphism I have to take check two properties of psi namely the first thing I have to check is that psi is uh, 
uh, I will have to check that it is a you know uh, uh, continuous then the other thing I have to check is that it pulls back regular functions to regular functions. So uh, the idea is very very simple so let me say tell you the idea in a very qualitative way how do I check psi is continuous I check psi is continuous by checking that the inverse image of closed sets are closed but what is a closed set a closed set on x is just given by common 0 locus of a bunch of polynomials okay and what is the inverse image of such a set under psi it is the common 0 locus of the bunch of regular functions on y that I got from these polynomials by composing with psi and uh, a the set of common zeros of a bunch of regular functions is a closed subset of a variety therefore psi uh, pulls back regular fun uh, therefore psi pulls back open closed sets to closed sets so psi is continuous it is very simple so let me write that down uh, so you know, you know it is actually this it is actually this argument it is actually just this argument but let me write it here uh, if uh, uh, z of j in x is a closed subset then psi inverse of z of j is uh, so I am just I am just reproducing what I have written there it is psi inverse of z of j is the intersection of z of h where h belongs to j and uh, this is the intersection h belongs to j of z of uh, h circle psi which is closed in x okay the the zero set of a single regular function is a closed subset okay and an intersection an arbitrary intersection of closed sets is again closed subset therefore this is a closed set so what I have proved is that the inverse image under psi of a closed set is a closed set so this implies uh, this implies that psi is continuous okay now the only other property that I have to check that check in order to ensure that psi is a morphism is that it pulls back uh, uh, regular functions uh, to regular functions so now there is a, there is a small there is a small hitch here in my argument I will need to I have already used the fact that h circle psi is a regular function which is something that I will have to show okay and that is purely a matter of verification so let me do the following thing so the correct way to do it is to use the fact that these are regular functions yeah so ba so basically it is a calculation so what I need to do is the following uh, uh, so, so let me rub this off just to say it in sequence so I need to tell that uh, start with so I have to make a small calculation start with uh, uh, with an element h in uh, 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 start with an element h in uh, ax uh, h is just a polynomial in T1 through Tn restricted to x. This is this is what it means because x is a x is a uh, is an affine variety in An and uh, uh, the the ambient affine space An in which x sits is supposed to have these as coordinates so the polynomial ring generated by this is a set of all polynomial functions on the affine space in which x sits and uh, any element in the uh, polynomial function set the in the ring of polynomial functions on x is the restriction of a polynomial to x okay but of course the uh, the function is uniquely defined but the polynomial is not uniquely defined it is defined only up to and uh, up to addition by an element of the ideal of x okay so choose uh, h uh, uh, instead of h choose a polynomial okay that represents h and call that also, also as h okay then uh, say uh, h is uh, if you want let me call this as g bar uh, where 
g is g of t1 etc tn g bar is uh, g bar is the image of g in ax which is a quotient of the polynomial ring uh, in n variables in these n variables okay which is the ring of all polynomial functions on a okay now uh, look at uh, so I, I want to calculate what uh, the pullback of h under psi is this is what I want to do okay so uh, what is uh, what is what is uh, 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 h circle psi what is h circle psi let us let us calculate this so basically what is happening is that I have uh, I have uh, y I have psi I have uh, x and here I have a polynomial h okay and this is my map uh, h circle psi okay it is just pull back of uh, h under psi it is just psi star of h. Okay, it is just this. What is wh what is it uh, if I evaluate it? So if you take a point small y in capital Y, that that goes under psi to psi of y, and that will go under uh, h, and you know the psi of y will have some coordinates, lambda one, etc., lambda n. Okay, and that if I if I apply uh, the function h of course the function h is going into k which is a1 if you want okay uh, with the Zariski topology all right so if I apply h applying h is the same as applying g okay so what I will get here is g of uh, uh, lambda 1 etc lambda n this is what the map this is the this is the this is this map which is uh, h circle side okay and if you look at it now it will be clear that uh, h circle psi is a regular function on uh, is certainly a regular function on uh, uh, on capital Y because it is actually a polynomial in the T i circle size in exactly the way in which g is a polynomial in the lambdas uh, in the in the t's see g is g is g of t1 etc tn okay so if you calculate uh, uh, h circle psi it will be actually just uh, g of t1 circle psi etc tn circle psi you will get this because you know evaluate it evaluate it and check since h circle psi if I evaluate it at a point what will I get I will get h of uh, uh, psi of y and h of psi of y psi of y is lambda 1 through lambda n and then I evaluate uh, h on that uh, h is uh, represented by a polynomial g so I will get g of lambda 1 etc lambda n okay and you will also see that g of t1 circle psi etc tn circle psi evaluated at a point at the point y is just evaluating g on t1 circle psi of y comma dot 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 tn circle psi of y but then you see psi of y is the point lambda 1 through lambda n and if I apply T i to that I will get lambda i so I will simply get g of lambda 1 etc lambda n okay. So this calculation this calculation tells you that uh, h circle psi is just a polynomial in the T i circle psi so what is h circle psi it is a polynomial combination it is a polynomial in these in these functions but what are these functions they are already given to be regular functions on y each t i circle psi is already a regular function on y and so if you write if you give me a bunch of regular functions on y and write a polynomial in those regular functions on y with coefficients in the field the result is again a regular function because sum and product of regular functions is again regular function okay. So it is so, so all this will tell you that h circle psi 
is in O1 okay since each T i circle psi is in O i okay you will get this. So what this will tell you in, in principle it will tell you that uh, psi pulls back uh, regular functions on uh, x to regular functions on y okay. So this is one of the conditions for uh, the map psi to be a morphism the only other condition now I have to check is the continuity of psi which we will follow uh, uh, as I gave in the earlier proof so only I have to check psi is continuous and that is because of the following thing psi is continuous because uh, psi inverse of z of j is psi inverse of intersection of z of h uh, uh, or let me put z of g, g belongs to j this is intersection g belongs to j z of g circle psi which is closed in y. So I am missing the fact that if you give me a bunch of uh, uh, regular functions and look at the set of common zeros that is a close that that gives a close locus and the and the and the reason for that is every regular function is locally quotient of polynomials and looking at the zero set is actually the same as looking at the zero set of the numerator polynomial okay. So uh, and we are done so you verified that if psi pulls back coordinate functions to regular functions then not only is psi pulls back any regular function to a regular function but it is also continuous so psi is a morphism okay. So it is a very beautiful uh, statement it tells you uh, very quickly how to verify that a map from in a given variety into an affine variety is uh, a morphism okay it is very simple all you do is you just show that the pullbacks of all the coordinate functions are uh, regular functions that is all you have to check okay fine. So uh, this is a this is a fact that is kind of buried in the proof of the theorem that I gave in the previous lecture so I just wanted to bring it out uh, now what we will do is uh, let us try to apply this and uh, reconcile some of the uh, results that we had uh, that we have already talked about earlier. So if you recall so if you recall uh, that you know if you have uh, f um, uh, in the polynomial ring k1 etc up to k of <coughs> x1 through xn uh, then uh, and and yeah then we have the the bijection the following <coughs> bijection so you see you have you have uh, you have a n uh, and this is just uh, this is with uh, this here is with coordinates x1 through xn okay and you had df the affine open the basic affine open set defined by f this is just uh, the uh, it is just the complement of the zero set of f it is an minus zero set of f okay so it is a locus where uh, f does not vanish and that is an open subset and I told you that this is a basic uh, open subset it is basic because every open subset can be written as union of such open subsets and because of quasi compactness in fact uh, it can be written as a finite union of such basic open sets and I told you that this the other beautiful thing about this sub subsets of this type is that they are actually themselves isomorphic to affine varieties and I told you that they are isomorphic to uh, a closed a irreducible closed sub variety of uh, an uh, affine space one dimension more okay so uh, how is how does that come about that comes about by taking a n plus 1 of k with coordinates uh, with coordinates 
the same x1 through xn but I add an extra coordinate y okay and what I do is well uh, I look at the 0 set of uh, uh, y f minus 1 okay. So uh, f is a polynomial in the first n variables and y times f becomes y minus 1 becomes a polynomial all the n plus 1 variables okay and <coughs> this polynomial is uh, is irreducible and uh, it is 0 set therefore gives an irreducible closed subset of uh, affine space mind you this is open and this is irreducibly closed of course you must remember that this being an open non empty open subset of affine space of course I am assuming this is a non empty set okay uh, um, f is a non constant polynomial okay and uh, uh, mind you that that is an open subset of affine space non empty open subset means that it is it also it is also irreducible and it is also dense mind you this this set here is irreducible and dense okay and uh, this set here is irreducible and closed and we have uh, we have this projection you project onto first n coordinates that is this projection map okay and under this projection map you have an isomorphism under the projection there is a bijective map from here to here this is something that I told you in and in fact I told you that uh, uh, this bijective map is actually an isomorphism of varieties okay in fact uh, it the map is very very simple to define you give me an element lambda 1 etc lambda n at which which is here which means f does not vanish at this uh, element you simply uh, associate to it the uh, this this element lambda 1 through lambda n and then you add 1 by f of lambda 1 through lambda n then you know this this satisfies the last coordinate y multiplied by f applied to the first n coordinates minus 1 equal to 0 which so it satisfies this equation and I can invert f of lambda 1 through lambda n because lambda 1 through lambda n is in the locus where f does not vanish okay. So I told this it is very easy to check that this is a bijective map but I told you actually to check as an exercise that is a it is a homeomorphism of topological spaces I hope you have done that but now the time and then I told you that uh, uh, it is even an isomorphism of varieties I told you that this is an isomorphism of varieties and uh, uh, you know uh, I told you that uh, 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 this is something that we will see later because at when I told you at that time I had not defined what uh, a morphism of varieties was but now that I have defined what a morphism of varieties is is I can uh, come go back and justify this uh, statement okay. So uh, if you look at this statement now okay what you can see immediately is that uh, uh, this is a this is a quasi affine variety because this is an open subset non empty open subset of an affine variety and this is an affine variety okay and if you take this map I have I have a set theoretic map now it is even a bijective map I have a set theoretic map from here to here okay and uh, let us let, let me take the map in this direction okay let me take a map let me take the map in this direction it is a bijective map okay. So you see I have a map from a variety to an affine variety this is an affine variety okay and it is a set theoretic map how do I check that it is a morphism I check that it is a morphism by checking that if I compose it with the coordinate projections okay then the resulting things give me uh, regular functions on the source variety okay. So you see uh, if I compose this map with the coordinate if I compose this map with the first coordinate projection I simply get the first coordinate projection here if I compose this map with the second coordinate projection and so on up to the nth coordinate projection I simply get the nth coordinate projection here which are of course regular functions okay because a polynomial is always a regular function and a regular function restricted to an open set is also a regular function there is no problem okay. What about projection onto the last coordinate okay if I project if I uh, 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 well I mean uh, so that is it I mean I, I just have to I just check that uh, if I project onto the last coordinate I get 1 by f okay if I take a point here I take the image there and I project onto the coordinate last coordinate what I get is uh, uh, a point here going to 
1 by f of that point so I get the function 1 by f but 1 by f is also a regular function on df okay so I have verified the condition that every projection of this map with the coordinate functions is a uh, uh, is a regular function therefore this becomes a morphism so it is a bijective morphism now okay now the only thing you have to worry about is that if it is it is a bijective morphism so you would be worried uh, uh, as I, I had warned in one of the earlier lectures that a bijective morphism need not be an isomorphism because the inverse map need not be a morphism okay but the fact is that what this induces at the level of uh, uh, regular functions okay is the following you will see that uh, if I call this map as let, let me call this map by something let me call this as p <coughs> uh, no I should not call it this way is projection so I should not call it projection I should call it as I should call it something so let me uh, let me give it some name well phi if you want okay let me call this as phi sub f because this f is involved okay then you know this phi sub f uh, will induce uh, alpha uh, of phi sub f which is a pullback map it is phi sub f star is a pullback map and what is this what is a pullback map it is it will it will go from the regular functions on the target so it will go from a of z of y f minus 1 to the regular functions on the source this is what you will get okay this is the pullback map this is the pullback map and see this uh, this is uh, this this uh, uh, coordinate ring the ring of functions is given by simply k of uh, x1 through xn comma y divided by uh, f y f minus 1 this is what it is this is the this is the ring of functions on that irreducible closed subset it is just the uh, it is just the uh, ring of functions on the our ambient affine space which is the polynomial ring in these n plus 1 variables the first n being given by the x's and the n plus 1 variable given by y modulo the ideal of this closed subset the ideal of this closed subset is the ideal generated by y f minus 1 because the y f minus 1 is an irreducible polynomial and it is an uh, it is an irreducible element in this uh, polynomial ring which is a ufd unique factorization domain so the ideal it generates is prime so actually I, I should write here the radical of this ideal okay because if I take z of j then I will have to put i of z of j okay but i of z of j is rad j so I will have to put radical of y of minus 1 but radical of y of minus 1 is y of is the ideal uh, radical of the ideal generated by y of minus 1 is the ideal generated by y of minus 1 because y of minus 1 is a prime ideal and that is because y of minus 1 uh, is an irreducible polynomial okay and it is sitting inside uh, uh, this polynomial ring which is a uft okay so this is the uh, ring of uh, functions and uh, you can I want you to check that this is the same as uh, uh, polynomial ring in n variables localized at f okay so this is this is an exercise which I want you to do uh, that to check that uh, it is very clear that if you uh, if you take an element here it what is an element here in the localization it is of the form g by f power n where g is a polynomial in n these n variables these n x's divided by some power of f that is of course a regular function on df because it is a quotient of polynomials a regular function is something that is locally a quotient of polynomials in this case it is globally a quotient of polynomials so it is very clear that these guys are certainly here the fact is they are all you can check that the inclusion of this inside that is actually a surjective map therefore this is actually equal to that okay this is uh, this checking can be done and now after you do that checking you check that this map is the natural isomorphism you get in commutative algebra it is the map that sends y to it is a map that is given by sending xi to xi and send y to 1 by f okay this map comes from this direction because of the universal property of the polynomial ring in n plus 1 variables and the map comes in and this map is an isomorphism 
because the map in this direction comes from the universal property of the localization. So you can check that this pullback map is actually this isomorphism this isomorphism which is completely uh, commutative algebraic okay. So what this will tell you is that this map phi f which is a bijective morphism if you look at the pullback map the pullback map gives you an isomorphism okay and uh, now you can uh, if you believe that whenever you have this uh, isomorphism of uh, uh, whenever you have an isomorphism then you know the object uh, mm, I mean this this tells you that it is correct to define the uh, it is correct to think of df or dff as an affine variety okay and to call this as a of dff which is what we started with we we defined a of dff like this okay and uh, i had given you uh, uh, i had proved that if you take the whole polynomial ring then the o of that uh, I mean if you take the uh, uh, if you take the whole affine space then the O of affine space is the same as E of affine space I told you that holds uh, not only for affine spaces it holds for affine varieties it holds for basic opens okay and uh, that is this checking that you have to do and so all this tells you that what we originally started with namely with defining this as A of df is the definition is correct because we define A only for affine varieties and DF is an affine variety because it is actually isomorphic to this. The fact that this bijective morphism is actually an isomorphism namely the crucial fact that the inverse map is a morphism comes from the fact that this is an isomorphism okay it comes from this fact it is reflected in this fact that this is an isomorphism alright. So this is justification uh, for uh, uh, defining A of DF as this set uh, as this ring okay that is one thing and then the final thing that I wanted to say is uh, about the equivalence of categories uh, of affine varieties and uh, finitely generated k algebras which are integral domains. So for that I need a little bit of functoriality so here is a uh, here is a lemma that you can easily check uh, um, if uh, y to x1 to x2 uh, uh, phi psi is a sequence of morphisms of varieties with x1 and uh, x2 are fine okay then uh, the morphism then the k algebra homomorphism k uh, sorry a of x2 to a of y given by the pullback of uh, psi circle phi which is uh, psi circle phi per star is the same is the same as the composition uh, I should be careful here it is a x2 I should not write a y I should write o y because <coughs> as I told you it is a convention that we write a only if it is an affine variety okay y is just a general variety need, need, need not be affine <coughs> but only x1 and x2 are assumed to be affine uh, yeah so let me continue the statement given by alpha of psi uh, psi circle phi is the same as the composition uh, uh, a of x2 to a of x1 to o of y which is uh, 
psi upper star this is the same as alpha psi and this is phi upper star uh, this is alpha phi uh, so I should write it as first apply phi upper star then apply uh, sorry first apply psi upper star then apply phi upper star which is the same as first applying <coughs> alpha phi then apply alpha of psi okay this is uh, this is just functoriality this is functoriality uh, uh, I am just actually you know uh, this looks a little uh, long to write down but all I am saying is that the notion of pullback of maps is very functorial which is which is uh, I mean if I if you have a composition of morphisms pulling back uh, uh, a function on the on the on x2 all the way to y is the same as first pulling it back uh, to x1 via psi and then further pulling back the resulting function uh, via uh, to to y via phi okay this is a very uh, uh, this is this is something that you can check very easily okay there is nothing much about it okay now uh, this is a very easy lemma to check okay so I leave it to you but then uh, the the important corollary to this lemma is the following uh, two uh, affine varieties uh, x uh, x1 and x2 are isomorphic and when I say isomorphic it means as varieties if and only if a x1 and a x2 are isomorphic as k algebras okay. So uh, so you know uh, this is basically because morphisms so the proof is it follows from the fact that morphisms of varieties <coughs> from x1 to x2 uh, via uh, this alpha map which is pulled back is this set can be bijectively identified with morphisms of k algebras from ax2 to ax1 mind you here I should have put I should have put ox1 but I can replace OX1 by AX1 because uh, X1 is affine okay if X1 is not affine <coughs> then I have to replace this AX1 by OX1 that is what we prove all right and of course this map is as usual you send a morphism to alpha of phi which is phi upper star this is just a pullback all right and what I want you to understand is that if this morphism phi is uh, has an inverse then there is a psi such that phi circle psi and psi circle phi are the corresponding identity maps okay and because of this lemma it will follow that phi star and psi star will be inverses of each other and that will tell you that phi star uh, phi is an isomorphism of varieties if and only if the induced map on pullback of regular functions phi star is an isomorphism of k algebras okay. So you get this corollary as a result of this lemma and uh, the the earlier theorem that morphisms into an affine variety are in bijective correspondence with k algebra homomorphisms from the uh, polynomials on the affine variety polynomial functions restricted on the affine variety okay so uh, so this completes uh, the uh, the statement that we have an equivalence of categories so let me write that down that's the final statement which is uh, which as i mentioned uh, couple of lectures at the end of uh, uh, the lecture before the last one that it is a grand uh, you know statement of the Hilbert Nullschellensatz namely it is an equivalence of categories so let me write that down here so uh, so you have a uh, uh, corollary um, uh, we have an equivalence of categories. So here is the equivalence of categories uh, 
on this side we have uh, a category of a fine varieties okay uh, these are the objects and uh, when I say category of a fine varieties it means that the objects are a fine varieties the morphisms are morphisms of varieties and on this side we have the category of a fine coordinate rings over k uh, which is which should be defined as category of finitely generated k algebras that are integral domains and of course uh, the morphisms there are k algebra homomorphisms and we have an equivalence of categories namely uh, you have a functor in this direction okay a functor is a generalization of function okay but since the source and target are not sets but they are categories we do not use the word function we use the word functor. So you have functor like this you have which has a kind of inverse functor in this direction okay and uh, uh, what is the equivalence you give me any x uh, you send it to a x so in this direction it is a okay and uh, if you give me and a functor is not only supposed to map objects to objects it is also supposed to map morphisms to morphisms. So uh, if you uh, if you give me another uh, uh, affine variety I get a y and if you give me a morphism phi from x to y I get a of phi this a of phi is nothing but phi star pull back of functions which is just alpha of phi in all our uh, previous notations okay. So this is a functor it for every object here you get an object there for every object here which is a, a, a fine variety I get an object there which is a finitely generated k algebra and that is an integral domain because it is a polynomial ring modulo a prime ideal alright so it is a finitely generated k algebra which is an integral domain and given any morphism in this direction in on this side I have a pull back of functions which is a k algebra homomorphism okay and uh, this and that the set of all such uh, psi uh, is bijective to the set of all such k algebra homomorphisms on this side is a statement that we have stated as a corollary there okay I mean it is part of the theorem that we prove and uh, what is more what you what you should see is that the arrows are reversed an arrow in this direction gives rise to an arrow in the other direction because you pull back fu functions from the target to the source. So uh, uh, we say that A is a contravariant functor because it changes the direction of the arrows as it goes an arrow in this category is converted into an arrow in the reverse direction in the target category so it is called a contravariant functor and what is the inverse functor in this direction the inverse function inverse functor in this direction is given by max spec okay it is given by max spec uh, and uh, uh, namely if you start with the finitely generated k algebra if you start with a finitely generated k algebra which is k of x1 etc xn modulo some prime ideal okay then what you can do is that you can take max spec of that uh, of that and this can be identified via the null stellen sets to uh, the zero set of p as a as an affine variety in a of an uh, in in an with coordinates with coordinates uh, these xis okay and uh, so if you go like this what happens is that you get the func you get a functor in this direction uh, this functor is also contravariant okay and uh, if you uh, uh, if you have bijection between sets what usually happens is that you start with an element here you go this way and then when you come back you should get the identity on this side and similarly for the other side but when you have a bijective equivalence of categories you will not get the identity what you will get is something up to isomorphism. So 
if you start with something here you go you take Ax and then if you take max spec of Ax what you will get is something that is isomorphic to X and why you get the isomorphism is because uh, A of that and A of your original X will be isomorphic because of the choice of coordinates the isomorphism comes because you are choosing a bunch of coordinates okay the isomorphism comes because it depends uh, when I write A X okay uh, you are choosing coordinates. So here is the very very uh, important subtle technical point the technical point is the following an affine space uh, if you take an affine variety the affine variety can sit as a closed subset in any affine in so many affine spaces for example take the plane the plane can simply sit inside A2 via the identity map it can sit as a plane it can sit as a two plane in A3 it can it can sit as a two plane in any AN but you know if you but dip, but how is affine coordinate ring defined affine coordinate ring is defined based on the embedding based on the ambient affine space in which your affine variety is sitting. So if x is a plane sitting inside a, uh, if x is the plane a2 then ax will become the polynomial ring in two variables but if x is say the xy plane sitting in three space then ax will become kxyz mod z which is again kxy okay. So the beautiful thing is this affine variety no matter in what affine space it is sitting in as a closed sub variety the Ax that you get will always be the same up to K algebra isomorphism okay that is a beautiful thing. So the coordinate ring the ring of functions on the affine variety is a very nice object it does not depend in uh, it does not depend on the embedding of the affine variety in a certain affine space if if it sits in some other affine space also the ring of functions will all change only up to isomorphism which is a nice thing which co goes on to tell you that uh, the fact that something is an affine space is a very intrinsic thing okay that it tells you that trying to characterize uh, an affine variety by its ring of functions is a very intrinsic thing because it it's, it, it it does not depend on the in extrinsic uh, choice of embedding of putting that uh, variety as a irreducible closed subset of some affine space no matter in which affine space you put it as an irreducible closed subset if you calculate the affine coordinate ring you will still get the same ring up to up to an isomorphism which means essentially a change of variables okay so you will get an isomorphic ring. So what this tells you is that the affine coordinate ring or the ring of polynomial functions on an affine variety is defined up to isomorphism and depends only on the variety it does not depend on which affine space in which you are considering this as an affine variety okay so it is a very intrinsic object so this A is a very intrinsic object for an affine variety and that is that is the subtle point. So uh, we started with this definition then we are it is nice that we have come to this point where we are able to say that uh, this does not depend uh, on uh, the affine space in which you are considering X as an irreducible closed subset. Uh, so with that I will stop this image.